Hello, welcome to Whiskey and Wool. This is my Knitter's Life series, season two, I guess, officially. But this episode is not going to be a regular episode. Instead, this is called The Moth Episode, where I'm going to talk to you about the pest we all fear and agonize over at some point in our woolly journeys. Yes, I think it's so important to talk about this fear. <laughs> and um, while I do hope that some of you get some, uh, that you benefit from this information I'm going to share here, I'm also doing this mostly for me because when I, I have now had very bad moth infestations twice. There was about a three year span between them. And uh, yeah, I um, learned a little bit the first time. I did what most of us probably do. I scrambled and uh, went and Googled like crazy, looked on the internet, trying to find sources, trying to find information about what to do <laughs> and how to handle it and how to prevent it. Um, so I learned a little bit then the first time. The second time I took a dive back in, I did not remember very much about the first time other than it was awful. And I really, going through it a second time, I just thought, I'm gonna take notes on this and maybe I'll make a video to help me understand um, what it is I need to do in case this ever happens to me again. But I do want to share that I learned quite a bit about preventative um, things to do when you have moth, to prevent moths from ever getting a foothold in your woolly stash or in your woolly items, whether it's uh, knits or um, cloth or furniture. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna share all of that with you. I think I have it down where I won't have any problems with these again. Um, I've done a couple things that I think are kind of extreme, but I think also quite useful. Um, and I took a lot of notes on my phone, so I'm gonna be looking down at that occasionally just to make sure I don't miss anything. And um, I'm going to begin this with, uh, oh, first let me just tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Dorami um, by Isabel Kramer. I've made, I knit it in 2018, 2019. It's, um, there's a project page on it. I'm not gonna talk about it. I just wanted to put that out there. It will be in the show notes down below. Um, as will, I will put down in the show notes below resources that I looked at um, what I did find was that not all the resources were comprehensive. Some of them just had wrong information or um, sketchy information, so not thorough, not thoroughly investigated. Um, as what happens on with internet knowledge, um, something gets published and then it gets republished, you know, 10 or 20 or 100 times and whether or not it's right nobody ever checks to see if it's right no one checks the source they just like go oh this person said this therefore it must be right and i'm going to talk about that so i think this time around my second experience with a bad moth infestation really i really learned quite a lot and i'm going to share my first-hand experience with you mixed with some of the um scholarly information that is available about moth infestations and how to handle them. Um, so I am going to also, where appropriate, I may put in some clips or some, I don't think I took clips from my last time, but it, I think about halfway through the process, I thought I need to make a video about this. So I might have a couple clips, but I might just put images in that I borrowed from websites um, and stuff like that, just to show you some stuff um, to get to illustrate the points I'm trying to make. I'm going to start with some key points and then I'm going to talk to you about if you have an infestation because maybe you're here watching this video because you have a really bad infestation and you're trying to figure out what to do and how to handle it and what's the best thing, best approach to getting rid of them and saving your yarn or your or your wool fabrics or your or your knitted garments or wool garments or even your 
couch or carpet um yeah <laughs> whatever you have in your house that's wool um or wool blankets even um so i'm going to start first with some key points the first thing to uh acknowledge or to understand about moths um the moths that eat your wool are not it's not every moth um there is uh the the clothes eating moth is uh, there are two variations one is called a case making moth the other one's called a webbing moth um unless you're looking at them very very closely they look extremely similarly they are both i'm going to try to find some pictures to put on here but they're both only about a quarter inch long and they are pale brown sometimes dark brown i saw some in my house that were dark brown um, but they'll go from like a golden brown through to a dark brown um, very very tiny when they are on your your whatever when they're not flying when they're at rest and their wings are folded back they literally look like a tiny little line like like a line drawn with a pencil about a quarter inch long that's what they look like the adult moths that you might see flying around are not harmful except for their ability to lay eggs and those eggs to become larvae the larvae are what eats your wool <laughs> so the larvae are the problem um, but if you kill the adults and kill the larvae and any eggs that are around you will solve your problem um, so we're going to talk about all of that um, so the life stage of these webbing moths or case making moths um, the life stages are uh, adults only live about two weeks to one month and they only breed and lay eggs so the females will lay the eggs the males will um, of course fertilize the females um, females once they lay eggs they're done they will die um, they'll probably die pretty close to wherever it is they laid eggs so if you find a dead moth um, somewhere you probably you may have on <laughs> a cluster of eggs somewhere nearby as well if it was a female it's pretty hard to tell the difference between them I guess an entomologist could tell the difference between a male and a female the way that if they are active and alive one of the ways to figure out whether it's a male or female the females will crawl or hop they don't fly generally and the males will fly the males fly kind of erratically um, they they have a wobbly sort of um, flop about like <laughs> they have a hard time aiming um, they yeah so the, you'll see them often flying around they are they are in search of a female um, the females meanwhile will um, not usually travel very far they again they're just crawling or hopping they are very very fast though and they do hide so um, the females will pretty much stick to dark areas in your home or in the wild um, and in shadows and they'll be more active at night when um, you're asleep and the house is dark <laughs> hope that helps so far um, yeah, so they are in the wild and um, I live in a very wooded area um, in the northeast of New Jersey and um, I've seen them outside. Uh, they are around so they actually perform a very important function. They um, will help animal material break down and decompose so they're part of the decomposition process of um, nature so um, they don't want to be in your home but they're in your home because you have things that are that they could eat like that their larvae could eat so again adults do not eat anything they're only breeding and laying eggs um, the eggs so i didn't finish the life cycle let me finish that and then i'll go back to the wild thing <laughs> eggs are eggs only for about one week so about eight maybe eight to ten days at the most um and then they hatch and they are larvae larvae last a long long time and these this is the most destructive stage of uh the whole moth life cycle um larvae can last 
anywhere from two to 30 months, depending on the, the climate that you're in and in, um, yeah, just also the time of year. So in the, the um, research seems to show that in winter months, in colder months or in colder climates, the larvae are larvae longer. Um, they're just more sluggish, like most insects just become more sluggish as the temperatures drop. Um, and I think actually in the wild, if it if they're outside, when it gets very cold, they just kind of stop moving, just like houseflies do. Like houseflies will just kind of go to sleep and then they wake up again when the, when your home is warm. Um, same with these creatures, so especially the larvae. So that's how they can last that long. Um, it might be good to say here that cold doesn't really kill them, um, but heat does. So if you're in a hot climate and your um, household, you know, gets really hot, like you don't have air conditioning on all the time, you're probably okay. Like you probably don't have an issue with moths. Moths tend to be more in, I mean, they're everywhere in the U.S., even in the warm climates. Um, they're just, you know, they have slightly different um, I want to say personalities, but that's the wrong slightly different behaviors. <laughs> no, it's kind of funny to think of them as having personalities. So um, generally, so, so, oh, and so after larvae uh, are done eating their fill and getting the calories they need, they will make a cocoon, which will last about two weeks, and then the life cycle starts all over again. So you have um, two to four weeks of a an adult, eight to 10 days of larvae or sorry of eggs eggs turning into larvae and then two to whatever months um up to 30 months of being larvae and then two weeks of a cocoon um so the life cycle process we could say takes anywhere from four to six months uh, so generally speaking like in an area where i live where we have seasons you could see two batches per year a year with a moth colony. <laughs> Yikes. I do have some entomologist sources that I will um, put here that talks more about the life cycle if you're interested in that. Um, so I, uh, my second point here on my um, notes is that uh, this is a natural life cycle in the animal world and um, their preferred food is actually feathers and fur. So they'll help animals um, break down. They will also eat skin, so also leather. So leather is animal skin, so they will eat that. Um, they don't eat living things, so that's important to know. You won't find moths nesting on live sheep or live animals. Um, they only eat dead things, and you'll often find them, like if you're in a wooded area like I am, if you have a lot of um, dead leaves in a wooded area, they may you may find them there they might be like maybe you'll find them around where there had been an animal carcass and, and stuff like that so um so yeah the female's job is to lay her eggs wherever there is uh food for her larvae um, so that's generally what they do um they only eat uh protein based fibers like uh, wool and silk. They won't eat any synthetics or any um, cellulose-based fibers like cotton or linen, um, synthetics like nylon or um, acrylic. There is a little exception. They will eat wool acrylic if it's blended with wool or nylon if it's been blended with wool but it's not their preference their absolute favorites are fur and feathers um they are very fragile and uh, in all stages and they're easy to dislodge crush or kill um so that's kind of a good thing for us when we have an infestation um that's why they stay hidden and are also nocturnal um, or they'll keep to the darkest corners and eat seldom worn or seldom used objects. Yeah, 
Um, so generally, if you have an infestation, you're going to, going to find the infestation is on objects that you haven't worn very much or used very much. Um, they also, what's also important to know about this is that, I mean, you may see in, on other sources that they, they like dirty wool, for example, or dirty fabrics. It's not that they like it dirty. They need the B12 that we create when we, uh, in our uh, bodily fluids. So saliva or urine or um, mucus, all of these bodily fibers or bodily fluids that we have and our animals have too. So if you have pets, you may need to be extra vigilant. Um, that that B12 is what they're going for. So generally speaking, they won't go after anything that's clean and has not been used. Um, okay, so let me jump into, now that you know all of this or some of this, uh, let's talk about when you have an outbreak because this is probably um, pressing for you. If you have an outbreak right now, you really are going to need some very, very good information about what to do. Um, so let me start by telling you uh, when there's an outbreak, remember that the moth larvae and eggs are all fragile. Eggs are probably the toughest, um, but they're not too hard to see if they're in the open. The problem with eggs is that they're often in cracks or crevices um, between like your baseboard and your floor, for example, if you have a crack there or between um, if you have wood uh, paneling at all or, you know, uh, beadboard, if there's crevices where the beadboard was joined, they might put eggs in there. They're pretty crafty because they know that they are fragile. Um, so uh, females also love baskets, which um, I have one here, but it's really, okay, like over my shoulder right here, like this. Those cracks and crevices in baskets, often that's where uh, females will lay their eggs. So um, if you like to store your wool in baskets like that, um, that's something that needs to be checked regularly and um, the basket needs to be cleaned, washed thoroughly and or uh, sprayed down with a pesticide. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so the first thing <laughs> you need to do if you find evidence of a moth infestation or colony being established in either, you know, where you have stored some of your items, whether it's clothing or um, materials that you're going to use to make other things or in maybe a couch that you have stored or a rug you have stored. Rugs apparently, storage of rugs are apparently a very common place where colonies will get established. I haven't experienced that, but I've read many, many things, many, many um, things about people that have found that. Um, so the first thing I would say is create a system and um, resist the urge to just take everything out at once and throw it all, jumble it all together. It's going to be better for you if you can systematically go through start with the spot first place where you found in a sign of an infestation and take those items um, out and isolate them. What I did, which I found very, very helpful, was I took out some flat sheets from my, that you would use, you'd use on a bed, um, and I laid them out, you know, with, in, in a room that was quite large. I had two of them, I laid them out, and systematically I took everything out and put them on the sheet um, so that I wasn't spreading and I did it very, very close to where I was storing it. Um, at one point I had a sheet, I, I had an issue in my closet most recently. So I took a sheet and put it on the floor in that closet. And then I also had a sheet right outside the closet door where I was taking these items and putting them down. Because remember, if you have like a stack of folded sweaters and you're carrying them, taking them off a shelf, and you are clumsy or maybe toss it around and stuff, as you're moving this, you're dropping larvae, eggs, and adults <laughs> wherever, well, at, at your feet essentially. So you could be spreading 
more around. So be extremely careful and cautious jiggle them and toss them around as little as possible take them out put them on that um, sheet what i did was i created a staging area i created a area that um, things that needed to be cleaned thoroughly and then things that were safe and looked fine no sign of infestation um, and ultimately what i ended up doing was just washing everything um, everything that was in my closet and had the potential for um, <laughs> being eaten um, and it was a bear I ended up spending a about a week washing everything so okay so create a system I used white sheets I would recommend light colored sheets I think they're easier it's easier to see what you're dropping so um, your staging area could be the shelving or storage also where the pieces are live and you'll just move them one by one uh, checking each piece out so if it's a sweater over um, a cloth or sheet or even plastic would be fine um, what you want to do is take your garment shake it like this you want to touch it because um, if you touch it like this you're going to find if there's any sort of crusty areas that would be an indication that eggs are laid on it um, and you want to just kind of shake and pull um, the piece like this and you will quickly see like things will drop off of it if you have larvae or um, adult moths they will drop off and fall to the cloth um, if there are eggs they also could drop off um, but certainly you'll feel the eggs it will feel like like you know not sticky like jelly but crusty like dried milk or something like that um or or like a really fragile glue so you can break it pretty easily with your fingers like you can you could end up like crunching it if it were there um they do often because they like dirty parts you'll often find um the damage and the egg laying in the cuffs and near the the hem like in the ribbing section um, also you'll find damage will be around the armpit um, because we sweat that's also a bodily fluid that they can make use of and often around um, the neckline too just depend like again because of your sweat or you know maybe you drop some food there or something um, those are all like tasty bits for them um, so yeah, so check all of that, do a really good job. And I did a lot of this where I was just like pulling, um, my hand over the garment and just like making whatever was in there would fall off. Um, one of the signs that you have your, you, a garment has a moth infestation or has some larvae that have been munching on it. There are a couple things that you may notice. One, you may notice some pilling. So, um, of course pills happen naturally through wear, but, um, pilling is also a sign that the moth larvae have been eating, um, because the moth doesn't just take a big bite out of the entire strand of wool instead it sort of pulls it apart um, and it eats it strand by strand fiber by fiber um, so like some of the pieces one piece in particular that I found that had been munched on um, the moth hadn't eaten all the way through the strand it had eaten partially through it or the larvae had eaten partially through the strand so um, uh, that brings me to another thing that I recommend you do and that is like hold the work by a light source if possible whether it's artificial bright artificial light or by a window on a sunny day um, they don't like light so they are more likely to drop off in bright light um, and you can also hold your garment up to that light source and check out um, you can often see <laughs> the actual uh, larvae or moth or eggs and um, you can also see signs of damage so you could see whether or not there was any um, munching through on that particular sweater this sweater was not infested at all um, i'm just using it as an example so yes so do all of that i'm going to just check my notes um, again for what is next yeah so examine um, i suggest also that wherever you're examining the garments that um, 
don't put anything else there because as I said, you may be dropping larvae or eggs or uh, adults off. Of course, if you see adults, I would kill them immediately because they will fly or scurry away. Um, the larvae too, the larvae will, um, will kind of wiggle and you know and 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 slip away They're, the larvae are very very small sorry i should have explained what they look like maybe i had pictures that i put in before i don't know um but the larvae are about a quarter inch long white or yellowish white colored uh worms they're pretty gnarly looking um unless you really are into uh, insects <laughs> um but yeah they uh, in all cases with me in the process that I was going through and looking, examining, I examined every single wool sweater in my wardrobe, um, which was about 30, I would say. <laughs> um, I have a, I'll put a picture in here. I have a shelving unit uh, where I stored my sweaters sitting on the um, shelves, on open shelving. And uh, there was a pretty bad infestation in this one section. And because of that, I um, ended up just looking at, checking out everything. Um, so the storage area or wherever it is that you found these, this, these infested pieces, you're going to need to clean that very thoroughly before you put anything back. Um, so what I would suggest is again with the system you have you'll have a staging area of things that need to be cleaned and you could just work directly off the shelf but eventually you're going to, going to need to put cleaned items back on the shelf. Um, you'll need an examination area you'll need a contaminated area where you're going to put places place items in need of cleaning and you're going to need a preventative area. Um, for other items that probably should be clean, but don't don't have any sign of infestation at the moment And then you're going to have a cleaned area ready to go go back into your storage area I can tell you this is exactly what I did with my last infestation That doing that setting up all those areas one. I feel really confident that I got rid of them all um, and I also feel um, I also it also just took over almost my entire apartment um definitely my entire bedroom because these these were in my bedroom closet and uh the areas were all spread out all over my bedroom um and also in my um in my home office and in my bathroom um i ended up washing everything so um, i'm going to talk to you about that in a minute um so let me just make sure i haven't missed anything um, the reason that I'm recommending a system is so that you don't cross contaminate. That is something that I ended up doing before I realized that I needed a system because nobody talked about creating a system in all of the resources that I looked at. And now after the fact, it totally makes sense. That's exactly what you want to do because there's a high, high risk of cross contamination because just carrying a sweater from here to the next room, you could be dropping larvae or eggs all the way along so you don't want to do that um, which is why you want to create a system and be extra extra cautious i would even go so far as to perhaps have a bucket or some sort of plastic bin that you could drop the items that you're about to examine into and then examine them take them out of that to carry it so that you're not dropping larvae i very definitely did drop larvae um in walking from my bedroom to the bathroom i dropped larvae along the way um and though they there was nothing for them to eat along the way i found them i mean i saw them so um I would, you know, very much <laughs> caution you about cross-contamination. Also, I want to point out that if you find a infestation in more than one place in your house, it's highly likely that you cross-contaminated at some point. So um, I keep all my wool stash over here and I do my knitting like across the room over there and I also do some sorting over here on this bed and you know my finished objects go into my closet so um if at some point you know sometimes I'm carrying yarn around if I have you know a skein of yarn that has um infestation and I don't know 
I could easily carry the yarn and cross contaminate different areas in my house. And I'm positive that I've done that um, in the past. I think I'm fine now, but in the past, I'm pretty sure I've done that. Um, so um, if you do realize that you've done some contamination, like what I ultimately ended up doing was when I was completely done washing every item, I did a thorough job cleaning everything, even the floors, the floors, the baseboards, the storage unit, and I'm gonna to talk to you about how to do that in a minute. Um, okay, yes, so, oh, the other recommendation I have is to turn your garments inside out, especially if you, in holding it up to the light, if you see something that looks suspicious, it will be very useful to turn it inside out. Also, like the more you handle the garment over something that you're going to be able to clearly see, whether or not there's um, larvae dropping off or, or eggs or um, adult moths, like you're, it's going to be helpful to, to really, really thoroughly examine these pieces. And, you know, pretty quickly you're going to figure out this is a piece that doesn't have any infestation and this is a piece that's very badly infested. Um, I would say that if you find a piece that has any sort of um, signs of infestation, so whether it's like actual moth life state in any life stage dropping off or I've, I also found sweaters with cocoons on them. <laughs> the cocoons kind of look like long cigar shaped, like quarter inch or three eighths inch long cigar shaped pills. So I found some sweaters that had cocoons on them. Um, so you may see that too. I ended up using for a lot of the sweaters that had pilling, I used a shaver, a sweater shaver, um, right there in a, a designated spot for sweater shaving. <laughs> designated for this purpose of cleaning out the moths. Um, and I um, shaved the sweater and that also seemed to draw out the suction of the, of the shaver drew out larvae. So uh, I found quite a lot of larvae as you can tell um, in the process of doing this. Um, okay, if your sweater has holes um, even tiny ones, it's contaminated and it needs to be isolated and cleaned um, pretty quickly. Um, some items, I think I've talked about this already, about how they eat, they pull the yarn apart and break it down to the single strand of fiber, which is really, really thin. I mean, we talk about micron count and we love those fine, fine micron counts. It's eating that micron. <laughs> it's not eating um, the entire, it's not taking a bite out of the entire strand. It's, it eventually gets there, but it's doing it um, micron by micron. Okay, um, so they could be on the sweater or cloth or in your yarn and you won't notice it um, because uh, it's in the process of being consumed but may not have noticeable damage. But certainly if it has holes, if you're seeing uh, when in your, in the examination area where you've got the cloth or plastic or something that you're examining, shaking your sweater or your yarn over or your fabric over, um, you may also see a sign that there's an infestation will be this sort of like blackish sand gritty stuff. That is what is known in scientifically as frass. Um, and that is basically moth poo or larvae poo. So um, yeah, that's a sign that it's eaten your garment. And what you'll notice, <laughs> fun fact, um, it's very, it's actually kind of soft. It's softer than sand. It'll feel like sand if you touch it, like, but if you push it, it gives and you'll notice that there's color. Um, so though it'll look dark brown or black, if you push on them or if you happen to rub, like I found them by like brushing the surface with my hand and suddenly there were like blue streaks and red streaks going across this clean, what had been clean white sheet or plastic that I was working over. And I was like, oh, gnarly, like that's blue because it was eating one of my blue sweaters. And that's red because it was eating one of my red sweaters. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, let me just make sure I got all the cleaning. So begin shaking, right? I talked about that. Um, the sandy bits, that's the frass. 
Uh, you want to make sure if you do find a piece with frass, this is a reason why the system is important. If you had a stack of four sweaters or you had a cubby full of with all the yarn and one of the yarns is dropping frass, you need to check every single other thing that's in the vicinity, like in that cubby or in that stack or in the next stack or the stack above. Um, you need to check, you're going to need to check every everything. Um, like I said, live larvae should drop off easily. They look like wiggly worms. Um, if they are casing making, case making moths, they may have, um, they may look like, you'll see the worm head sticking out, but you'll see this sort of cigar shaped, um, uh, like cocoon almost that they, they uh, stick their heads out of. I had webbing moths, not the case making moths. Um, I've seen pictures of case making moths. In, in the US, case making moths are quite rare. Um, usually if you've got clothes eating moths, you're, you have the webbing moths. Uh, okay, yes. So, oh, if you're, if you're dealing with fabric with a woven, not knits, I suggest getting like a, a sturdy, bristled brush, like a nylon bristled brush and brushing the um, fabric to loosen any larvae or eggs. That tends to work really, really well. Um, yeah, so you'll look for little woolly tabs that resemble pilling and cigar plump and squishy, they're larvae or case making. Um, also, you if you're using a sweater shaver and it has a um, most of them have something that it collects all of the shavings in. Empty that and check it. Empty it into the garbage and into a designated garbage that you're going to take out when you're completely done with this process. Um, okay. So when you're done with each piece, you're going to want to clean your examination area thoroughly. Um, I use some heavy tape. Um, some wide two inch heavy packing tape. Um, I just looped it around my hand in a, in a circle and used that to pick up all the bits and, and bits, bits and you know, whatever was dropped off. I cleaned that area again so that with the next garment I would be able to see whatever that particular garment was dropping off. You can also vacuum if you have like a handheld um, dust buster or something you can vacuum, but do be aware that vacuuming when you have a moth infestation or even per, per, for preventative moth infestations, you want to empty that bin when you're done cleaning within a couple hours, certainly before the evening, um, into a bag and you wanna take that bag outside. You don't wanna leave that in the house because they will um, just make a new home in your vacuum or dust buster or whatever it is, sweater shaver. Okay, next wash your pieces. So you've got your stack of um, contaminated needs to be cleaned and dealt with. Um, go ahead and wash those. Um, you can wash any contaminated sweaters, yarn, or fabric. The water temperature does not matter. Um, you will find sources online that will say that your water temperature must be hot. It has to be 120 degrees and blah, 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 blah or very, very cold, or put your contaminated things in a hot thing, or put your contaminated things in a warm thing. No, just so if you have a sweater, that, a sweater that's been nommed, um, just wash it like you did when you blocked it. Soak it for 30 minutes in, in, a, in, you know, in whatever wool wash you use, and, um, in whatever temperature is appropriate for the garment or the yarn or the fabric. And that's it, that's all you need to do. That will kill everything. The uh, eggs will get soaked off. Um, the adults will die as will the larvae. So don't worry about, you don't have to, um, I learned this the hard way, I ruined a hand knit, one hand knit sweater that had a potential for being contaminated by washing it in hot water and it shrunk. Um, because I thought it had to be hot water. It does not have to be hot. Cold is fine, if that's what you need to use. 
Um, you can machine wash or hand wash, it doesn't matter, whatever is appropriate for the item, the appropriate method and temperature for the item. Definitely use soap though. I think soap is a factor for one, cleaning it, cleaning your garment and killing um, the, uh, the little critters. I say soak for at least 30 minutes. That's my usual, that's what I did. It worked just fine. Um, you'll see on a contaminated garment, so maybe you missed the worms and whatever, you missed a larva here or an adult there or some eggs, you'll see things floating in the water like you didn't when you just blocked it and it was a brand new hand knit sweater. Um, yeah, you'll see like debris floating in the water. It's pretty gnarly. Um, so that is, that now that you know that, it, you may want to take the first couple things that you find that seem to be contaminated or you know are contaminated. Instead of spending time examining them, you may want to save the examination for um, things that you're not sure are contaminated. And ones that you know are contaminated that show signs of contamination, just wash those right away. That's what I did my last time that I found a contamination. I did I actually had a, a few commercial store-bought sweaters um, that it, the infestation I had was really deep into the store-bought sweaters that I hadn't been wearing for a couple years, and a couple, and they some of them were quite old. Um, I'd had a one, I had one wool sweater that I had for at least ten years, and I just hadn't, I hadn't worn it, because so I was wearing hand knits. <laughs> so um, that was where the majority of the infestation was. It was in this one wool sweater, and um, I took that sweater and immediately bagged it up and put it in the garbage, um, like put it in a garbage bag, not to, because it was too far gone, um, which you can do too. So you can, if you decide you don't want to try to say, save them, save your items, you can just throw them away, but bag them up in a plastic bag and take them right outside. Um, take them outside by night, because again, like they're in the evening hours through the night, they're active. They're in at, more inactive in the daytime. Um, yeah, so yarn can also be soaked because uh, it is soaking all of your yarn at some point, all your wool yarn or wool blended yarns all um, have been put in water several times before it got to you. Um, so you can also soak your yarn. Um, just take a skein. I don't know if I have a skein handy that I can show you real quick. Um, obviously, if your yarn's in a cake like this, you're not going to be able to soak it. It'll take forever to dry and it'll probably get moldy. Um, you're going to need to re-skein something like this before you soak it. But if you have yarn in a handy skein, I don't have a handy skein. Well, maybe behind me. Okay, like this. If you have yarn in a skein like this, you can just unskein it and it can, this can go right in water. Um, and yeah, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> just soak it. And then you will do the same process um, that you do with your hand knits. You um, take it out, uh, gently squeeze the excess water out, roll it in a towel, and hang it up to dry. Um, yeah, it's a pain, but it's gonna save <laughs> your piece. It's gonna save your piece, your your um, your things. It's a and that's my next my next note. Yes, this is a total pain, but you might and it will take days <laughs> if it's bad. It will take days. It for about I would say a solid week. This cleaning my wool garments because mine was in my sweaters in my sweater storage unit it took days days and days of things hanging and drying and and systematically taking things and soaking them and uh, hanging them up and just I mean there was just wet wool everywhere in every nook and cranny um, but I think I beat them <laughs> Um, in addition, like you will also have like some freshly clean wool. So um, in in preventative, which we're gonna get to in a minute, um, 
you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, let me get, let me talk to you about the preventative stuff, um, in a minute. So you're going to wash anything too, besides everything that looks contaminated, you're going to wash anything that is extra important to you just in case this is preventative. Um, there's a couple alternatives to washing. So let's say that maybe washing just isn't going to work for you. Um, heat does kill larvae and eggs. Um, it's really questionable whether cold does. Some people will tell you that cold does, but I don't think it kills them. I just think it makes them sleepy. Um, I didn't find any evidence. I mean, I think it has to be really, 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 really cold, like sub-zero for a, a, a pretty long time. Drinking some lovely herbal tea. Um, okay. You can also dry clean your pieces, uh, but that is very expensive. And, um, you know, it does work. It does work. You can also try uh, dry heating for non-washable items. So if you have something that cannot be washed or should not be washed, or maybe you have cakes of wool that you don't really want to spend the time rescaining because you may end up scattering the <laughs> larvae around as you spin it, um, as you are rescaining it. Although you could rescan it by hand. You could rescan it. You could literally rescan it by um, using your arm as a um a place to put the you know you just like you when you're doing a cord like your vacuum cord or something you would just do it over your hand like this and i would say work over something that um you know an area that you can visibly see whatever drops off and you also oh i forgot to say this too when you're cleaning make sure you're wearing something cellulose based not protein based you don't want to wear a pretty wool sweater while you're cleaning because uh they will, and that happened to me, I was wearing this nice wool sweater that I knew hadn't been contaminated, and um, because I was picking things up and pressing them against me to carry them places, I ended up with some nice holes right on, you know, on the middle part of the sweater because some larvae had been, you know, just transferred themselves over to the sweater that I was wearing. Um, so you want to make sure you don't do that. Um, that was rather disheartening, though I, I just stitched those back up with some um, scrap yarns that I had. Um, so it was fine. Uh, you can, people, talk, I didn't try this, but uh, you, people talked about microwaving for three minutes and it was said to work in research lab experiments. Um, so three minutes on high, and the method is that you put water in a bowl with the items. So you would put a bowl of water in there, and then you could put your other items in there as well. You want to make sure that you, you're not putting anything in there with metal on it, so you wouldn't have any, like, say, metal buttons on it or um, anything like that. So if there, if there are metal buttons, you'd want to cut those off. Um, I mean, if we're talking about like a wool jacket that you think or you want to make sure is not infested or um, you want to make sure it's clean, just take it to the dry cleaners and let them deal with it. You can also dry clean rugs um, and you can also try using, a, if you have a rug problem or a furniture problem, I recommend a steam cleaner because a steam cleaner will reach over 120 degrees. Most of them reach, I think, 400 degrees, like very, very, very hot. They, some of them get, get, can get very hot. I have one. I did not use it because uh, for this purpose because I was working with garments. Um, so, but I did, I have wool rugs all over my house. Every room has wool rugs and uh, I have a couple cotton rugs, but mostly I have wool rugs all over the place and um, they're all set up so that n there is no rug under any furniture. Um, so that, because that becomes a favorite place. If you have a carpet under a bed, like maybe, you know, two feet or something's under your bed or a couple feet are under your couch, uh, those are your problems places where uh, a colony could get established because it's dark and maybe you're not vacuuming under there. <laughs> so you want to make sure that's, um, that's, uh, you know, in, in not, uh, happening to you. Um, Non-washable items, um, in the old days, before there was any technology really, people would take their items outside 
and put them out in the sun. The sun will make them drop off, as I said before, because they're looking for dark spots. So if you have like, I don't know, a couple lawn chairs or outdoor chairs or something, and you wanna drape um, a big piece of cloth or a rug over them. You could also like get, get a rug beater and um, you know, be your best, channel your best pre-industrial self and beat that rug with the rug beater. <laughs> <laughs> and that that should work um probably within you know one afternoon of it sitting in the sun everything should drop off um that that's a problem so and you want to make sure you turn it over and expose both sides um yeah uh okay so eggs which are future problems um and again like they'll hatch within a week or so about 10 days at the most um eggs are little pinhead sized um oval shapes sometimes they are whitish or slightly sticky or crusty residue in uh, wall or furniture cracks crevices seams you'll find them as i said before near cuffs or neck bands um Washing, as I said, should dislodge them. Um, sustained dry heat over 120 degrees will kill them. Um, eggs usually aren't on garments. They're just going to be nearby. So in my case, there may have been, there are crevices between where the shelf boards, the shelving boards meet. Um, there are crevices there. Uh, that would have been where there would be eggs. Um, there and or or they'll be like as I said in crevices where there's baskets in that closet I only have one basket um, and it isn't anywhere near where the sweaters are and it does not hold anything that is um, protein based <laughs> fiber um, you can uh, so if you do have something that cannot be washed and you're you want to make sure it's safe you can use a pesticide to clean to spray it um, i use one called home defense i don't remember the name i'm going to put it, a picture of it on screen because i don't have it mm, ortho that's the brand <laughs> um this one says that it is pet safe um it is child safe. It is like, in other words, it's not going to poison your pets or your, or your young children. If they, you know, if you spray it and they touch something that you sprayed or lick something that you sprayed, they're, they're not going to, uh, be poisoned. Um, but it kills, it has, to, it's important that, so this one is called ortho home defense. There's a, um, a chemical that's in there that is important doesn't matter which spray you use this is unsponsored i don't know who ortho is it's some big corporation they don't know who i am um it's just one that i found that i like because it's pet safe and i have a cat and i want to make sure he's safe um so you can and it is also safe to spray on fabrics so you can use this like i actually used this spray and sprayed after i was done vacuuming the entire shelving unit i then sprayed this on every shelf in all the cracks um, both inside and outside to make sure that if there were any eggs um, they were going to be killed so um after of course after you're done with uh sorting through your stuff you want to make sure you do clean your storage unit so as i said you can wipe down with any cleaning solution of your choice some people like vinegar there's no extra strength in terms of vinegar um, against these bugs it doesn't matter just use whatever you use i use a product that's made by the company method um, that's just the cleaning product of my choice um, but use whatever you like and then I would also say vacuum everywhere um, that it, it's possible to vacuum so I spent some time after I wiped down the shelving unit I then vacuumed the shelving unit to make sure I was vacuuming up any debris so any like larvae that may have been left behind and any um, eggs or adult dead I found a lot of dead adult moths in this last um, I didn't find any living ones um, I probably hit the cycle just where the larvae were you know 
active and wriggling and I did find some cocoons so it was probably I probably got them right in that early part before any adults could hatch um yeah so wipe down vacuum um be sure if you're if you do have a situation in a closet area I would say vacuum everything um including inside shoes because that, especially shoes that you may not be wearing, because again, if your shoes are leather, they will eat leather. Um, so you can vacuum, you know, inside the shoes. You want to, dust bunnies, they'll eat dust bunnies because what are dust bunnies? It's, it's your um, skin and hair and your pet's skin and hair that's been dropped off. So, and it, they just kind of form into uh, dust bunnies. So they will form uh, colonies in dust bunnies if you're not cleaning those. So you want to make sure you're getting all of those vacuumed up. Um, if you are uh, trying to determine whether or not you've done a good job cleaning or whether or not you have a problem and you want a quick answer, you can grab a black light. A black light will um, shining on these, on any, actually any biological uh, thing it will glow so the larvae moths and eggs will all glow um, under a black light so you can use a black light as a handy tool it's handy like it's handy to have a black light if you have a pet anyway because if you're ever trying to figure out where maybe if you think if you're smelling like you know dog pee or cat pee and you're and you know you just can't find it a black light will help you find it right away um because it will glow so that's that's always useful and it's also a good way to check um you know if, also if you have a child and you're not sure if they've piddled somewhere you can find the piddle pretty quickly with a black light after you're done with the vacuuming i would then i went back and sprayed everything with my home defense spray um you want to make sure uh, you spray very well. Um, it will kill all the life cycles, the adults, the larvae, and the eggs. Um, sprays say they last 12 to 18 months. I can't confirm that. Um, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> um, I actually, so I had an infestation in this cubby right here. And I... Um, sprayed I, t I emptied everything out everything's all my yarn is in bags and so I just saw what I saw was an adult in there um, and so I took all my yarn out inspected every bit and everything's in Ziploc bags that are sealed and they won't eat through Ziploc bags they won't eat through plastic um, and I uh, then took this is when I learned about the um, oh my gosh I have the there's a chemical that has to be in the spray in order to kill these these insects and it's called pyranthrins it has to have one percent <laughs> of that <laughs> and that will then kill them um, you also if you're spraying the spray pretty heavily you want to make sure you're working in a ventilated area or that there is ventilation for you um, so that you you know don't cause any problems any breathing problems so yeah, as I was saying, I found one adult in this top cubby here. I emptied out the this entire thing. I uh, washed it all down and then I sprayed everything really, really heavily uh, with that spray and then put all my yarn back. And I haven't had any problems since. And that was a couple of years ago. I yeah. So if insecticides isn't something you will you are willing to use or you cannot use um you can try other non-toxic cleaning supplies um but you're but if you and if you're not willing to use an insecticide that's cool you're just gonna have to be a lot more vigilant about watching where you know whether or not you have an, a new a resurgence of this infestation or um you know, to keep, to beat them back, you're going to have to work harder, um, with your cleaning efforts. So, um, just be prepared for that. Um, and then finally you want to do one last vacuum, especially the floors where you were carrying things around, where you had your stage. You want to make sure you cleaned all that. I took my sheets that I used and right down to the laundry room and washed everything. Um, cause washing machine washing works just fine. Um, 
also what I saw on many, many of the sources, they were saying like, oh, you have to dry, you have to machine dry the things to really kill them, whatever you're washing. That's not true. Machine washing works just fine. You can machine wash and hang dry. Totally fine. You've killed them. Um, so don't worry about that. Uh, you also want to clean any furniture that's been exposed um, to your whole process. Like as you were trying to, to go through this cleaning um, examination process, I inadvertently took a pile of sweaters over to my bed and laid things out on my bed before I realized how bad it was. It was awful. I mean, that was the worst thing I could have done. I ended up, I had a very infested sweater in that pile. I All this frass fell out on my bed. It was awful. So I had to wash everything <laughs> that was on my bed, um, including my comforter and my sheets. I had to vacuum everywhere, my mattresses. I, yeah, it. I made it the problem worse for myself, which is why I'm saying like, be really careful and systematic about the way that you're doing this. But just be aware that, um, you know, you're, you could potentially transfer, um, an infestation from one place to another just by walking with, you know, a, a skinny yarn that has something or a ball yarn or a, a, a garment that has um, larvae on it. Um, okay, and I also said wear cotton or synthetic when you work, I already said that. Um, you wanna also make sure you wash the clothes that you're wearing, even if they are synthetic or cotton because they might have something stuck to them. You just wanna make sure that everything gets washed. Um, try to do everything, try to do the entire cleaning process in one day if possible, but um, if it spans over a day, keep the clothes that you were wearing separate from everything else, like maybe put them in a bag and then you could take them back out of the bag on in a, you know, in a area that you are using to examine and um, put them back on. You just wanna make sure you're not tracking and cross-contaminating um, anything. So yeah, so that's all uh, how to handle an outbreak. So now let's talk about preventative. <laughs> that, that wasn't enough for you. Uh, okay, preventative is a little bit easier because I think you probably kind of get it, right? Um, wait, let me just scroll back up. Okay. So the best thing you can do to prevent getting this. So let's first talk about, before I get this, get to that, let's talk about where they come from. So in my case, I think they ended up here in, I'm on the third floor of this beautiful home. <laughs> That's where my apartment is. I think what happened was they crawled in. I um, There is um, one side of the house where out in our carport, there were very definitely uh, these clothing moths because our um, hair, our um, clothes dryer vent blows into the carport. So there's there's a ready food source for them. Besides, like they are also um, in the woods around us, um, eating uh, you know animals or dead birds or whatever that things that die they're out there helping um, with that decomposition process that's very important a very important role <laughs> in this world um, I saw when we first moved into this place that there was a there was some there were some hanging around in the carport and um, since then my brother-in-law has uh, power washed the carport a few times, so there hasn't been any, I haven't seen any, but I did see some when we first moved in about eight years ago. My, I have windows that look out over that carport and I, I used to open those all the time. I stopped just because um, they're, uh, the t I noticed that it's an area that um, gnats come into because they can fit through the screens. We have screens, but the moths are small enough to fit through the screens as are gnats. So I was having like a lot of gnats come in in that side of the house. So I stopped opening those windows. But early on in the first few years we were here, I was opening those windows. And it's possible that one crawled up and into the screen and then, you know, got in the house that way. So that's one way. Um, another way they could have come in through the door that looks into the carport. And 
you know, maybe they just got inadvertently carried upstairs. I used to, um, for a while, long while, I kept a lot of stuff downstairs, a lot of my coats and scarves and stuff like that. And now I don't keep any of that down there. Um, not because of the infestation, just because my son's moved out and I have more room to store stuff upstairs. So uh, I may have carried, maybe I carried some up here. Maybe there was some on a, a shawl or scarf I left down there and I brought it on up here without knowing. Um, yeah, so those are different ways that you could inadvertently infect your, I mean, they probably, in my case, probably came from outside in one way, shape or form. I can tell you where they don't come from. They do not come from people that you buy yarn from. <laughs> they definitely didn't come from that. Um, they may have come from, if you are a flea market shopper and maybe you brought home some flea market items or you brought home some stuff from a relative's house, an older relative, or maybe not even necessarily an older relative, but somebody else, somebody else's house, definitely you could have ended up um, the reason I can confidently say you did not get them from the yarn person that you bought the, you know, brand new skeins that you bought from someone that came um, from their place of business to you is because that wool is clean and they can't, moths don't get, the larvae don't get that vitamin B <laughs> from clean wool. Um, so that wool has been if it's commercial made it's been processed and cleaned several times if it's indie dyed there's a lot of washing and um you know a lot of soaking that happens in that process so i mean your those things were clean so that absolutely did not come from those to those places for sure um okay if you do have them or i mean if you want to keep from getting them if you don't have them and you want to keep from getting them you want to make sure you're closely checking things that you are bringing in if you are like a garage sailor that's that's cool or a flea market person you want to make sure you're examining anything that you bring home that is made from from fabric because you could very definitely be bringing in some moths um in eggs or larvae or adults um, you could very definitely be bringing them in so make sure that you're washing those things isolating those things from everything else in your home and washing them thoroughly or spraying them down with that insecticide that I talked about um, not that brand maybe but something that has the chemical that I talked about you want to make sure you're spraying you're taking care of those if you're bringing home a uh, used rug that's wool you should just take it right to the dry cleaners or leave it outside in the sun if you have that opportunity to vacuum it really well spray it all do all of those things to prevent um, infesting everything else in your house um, so those that's absolute you really want to make sure you do that you also like so the best preventative thing against um having letting moths like if you do happen to bring a moth in or some larvae into your home the best way to keep them from spreading is to clean thoroughly so you should be vacuuming regularly i would say vacuum once a week um you want to make sure you're moving the heavy furniture that is sitting over any wool items like rugs you want to vacuum under the uh, rugs and stuff i have a robo vac a little um robotic vac vacuum that's about this high and it gets under everything so it goes under my couch it goes under my chairs under my tables under the beds um, so there's no chance that there's anything thriving in those areas and that helps me feel confident <laughs> Um, again, dust bunnies provide food, so you want to make sure you're eliminating dust bunnies. Like probably my biggest area that is a struggle is my closet because uh, I have a lot of shoes and um, a lot of opportunity and crevices and cracks for things to hide in. So what I do is vacuum that area every couple of months really thoroughly with a handheld um, a hose attachment, not for my RoboVac, but to a regular vacuum, and I also spray um, pretty regularly in there, especially around the bottom, around the baseboards and stuff, anywhere crevices, um, places that moths can hide. Um, so wool rugs are a ready target, as I said, but regular vacuums will, regular vacuuming will keep them safe. Also, if they're getting light on a regular basis, they're probably safe. Um, 
Okay, I already talked about that. So um, do know that wearing and handling your items will dislodge eggs and larvae, but um, it's kind of gross though, right? If you, they are on there, you're, you're dropping those little buggies all around your home, all around your office or wherever you go in your car, they could drop off in your car. Um, and, and probably in the area where you stored them too. So like I have said that I have a, a pretty big walk-in closet. And so um, I was taking my sweaters off the shelf and, um, you know, maybe giving them a little shake out and then putting it on. So that meant that if there was larvae on or eggs on that sweater, they were dropping down to my closet floor. And then also what I was doing um, for a period of time, I don't do this anymore, but for a period of time I was taking, I would take my whatever I wore that day off and drop it onto the floor. So then if I'm wearing a sweater and I'm taking it off and I'm putting it on the floor, if there's larvae or eggs down there, they're just like cozying right up onto that sweater. And then I'm putting that sweater back up on the shelf the next day or you know a few hours later or something. Um, so you want to make sure you want to just kind of examine what your habits are and make sure that these are habits that you're that are going to keep your items safe. So I stopped doing all of that. I'm super careful now um, when I take an item out of my closet that is, you know, is something that has wool or wool content or silk or silk content like a blend. Uh, I'm being really, really careful about how I'm handling it. I'm examining every time, every single piece <laughs> before I put it on. Um, if I want to give it a shake out, I am um, carrying it very carefully and consciously to a space, an area of the um, like bathroom or maybe in my kitchen or my bathroom sink um, and shaking it out over that. <laughs> So that if there is anything that's going to drop off, it drops off there and I can see it. And then I know I have a problem. Um, so I've been very, very conscious of that. So that that's what I would recommend. Um, so you want to carefully inspect prior to wearing, especially if you have some pieces that have been sitting for a few months, like say maybe it's, you know, late here our spring is very cold so I can wear sweaters really up through June um, and then it gets hot all of a sudden and we'll have very very hot months and then it gets cold again you know slowly ease back into cold weather so I may not I'm I'll wear sweaters through June but then July August September even October I may not wear them so it's like probably mid-October before I start wearing sweaters again maybe even late October um, so that's a good period of time where things have just sat. So you really wanna pay attention at that point um, that if things are have sat, you really wanna pay attention. You really wanna spend some time inspecting them. Um, yeah, so uh, they, so moths won't infest places that, or areas that you and your pets um, use all the time, but those, th like if you have an old dog bed that maybe you got a new dog bed and you toss the old one in the corner thinking, eh, you know, well, maybe I'll keep it and do something else with it and you don't wash it or anything, like you don't clean it or wash it, it's potentially gonna get infested within a couple months. Um, so do make sure that you take care of those things right away. So they won't attack you or your pets while you're sleeping. <laughs> you're way too scary for them, so don't worry about that. Um, I also, it's probably a good habit to, like it's hard for me to understand exactly when I'm gonna stop wearing my sweaters because our weather can change pretty abruptly. Like it could be very, very cold, cold enough to wear sweaters and then suddenly not be. Um, but it's important to maybe spend some time washing everything. So this spring I will take some time to systematically go through and wash all the sweaters that I've been wearing. Um, it, I have a new storage system that I'm gonna show you at the end or pretty shortly. Um, I'm wrapping things up in case you're wondering. Um, yeah, so I, and that will make cleaning uh, my sweaters very, very easy. So you, you should clean your knits regularly. Follow the same steps that you followed when you finished the object and um, wet blocked it. So you wanna just follow those wet blocking um, rules. Um, an alternative, oh, here, I'm, I'm at that point. An alternative uh, to 
cleaning them is to use vacuum sealed bags uh, for items that you're not going to be wearing or um, I switched to these plastic bins. You can see the brand right there. It's a 19 quart tote. Um, you can see through them. So these sit on my shelf like this and I can easily see the sweaters stacked up in there. Um, there's room for new ones, for new hand knits, um, and you can flip it around so you could see the other side if you want. But this lets me see what's in there. Yes, there's a little. It's a little bit harder. A little requires a little extra effort to get work uh, to get dressed for work. I have to take the bin out, put it down, open open the latches, take the sweater out. But you know what? I will never have to wash every sweater again because I have about, I can't even remember, 15 or 18 of these bins now storing my hand knits <laughs> and other and some of my shop bought knits. Um, at, at worst, if one gets infected, it's only gonna infect the ones in that bin. So at worst, I'm washing maybe six sweaters. Um, I'm not dealing with a, an infestation in my entire sweater collection or in my entire closet. So oh, it, this has brought me such relief and I am so glad that I um, went ahead and, and did this. I think I'm pretty much done. Um, I talked about storage. Um, oh, also it's important to know that um, here. Keeping bags, yeah, so keep storing your yarn in Ziplocs or um, or in fabric bags, like these cotton fabric bags. If I have some sock yarn in here, a little sock project. This keeps them safe. You don't have to worry. They don't have to all be in sealed uh, plastic bag or plastic containers like that. I wanted something I could see through easily. I didn't want to fiddle with bags. This is pretty easy. Um, at worst, I'm pulling the bin out, looking on the other side, putting it back um, just to try to browse what I have. Um, what I did with my plastic bins was I arranged them. Uh, I had my, my sweaters arranged this way anyway on the shelves. Everything was arranged by color and by weight. So my lighter weight sweaters, um, I do the Roy G. Biv color wheel, <laughs> color <laughs> rainbow arrangement. I don't have a lot in the, in the Roy section, but I have a lot of the G. Biv um, colors. So I, yeah, so everything's kind of arranged that way. So this is my, um, my uh, pink bin, pink lightweight sweater bin. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that, it, that's a method, right, that you can use. So, so do know that you're, like if you have projects stored, knit projects stored in project bags, maybe even long-term, maybe you have some old languishing whips or something, they're fine. If you have them in a cloth pa uh, fabric project bag, totally fine, totally safe, no worries. Even, you know, this, I would even venture to say this tiny little crack created by the zipper, fine. Um, I don't think you'll have any worries about um, infestation with that. Um, mm -mm. Yeah, so project bags, blanket storage bags too are fine. Um, usually blanket storage bags are um, plastic on two sides, but the, the side around is made out of this nylon mesh fabric. Um, to breathe for breathability. That's totally great. Those are, those are really good. Uh, good method. Um, uh, oh, so clean wool and fiber. I meant touched on this before. Should be safe. You can probably leave that out in the open. If you think about like yarn shops, um, they keep all their yarn out in, in the open. They don't have a moth problem because all that stuff is clean. There's no, that bodily fluids aren't there yet. So um, they should be safe. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, all of this should be safe, but as I told you, even though I have everything in plastic bags, I did find an adult moth crawling around in one of these cubbies. So I was really relieved and glad that I had um, my wool in bags. And so what I, you know, so I, I don't wanna take that chance. I mean, if you, if it works for you, great. 
Uh, maybe, or maybe if you don't have a problem, you've never seen a problem, you've never had an infestation problem, you're a scrupulous cleaner, you vacuum all the time, you're always vacuuming around your stash, you're making your, or, and or spraying around your stash, you're probably fine um, with all of that. Um, yeah, so, and cotton, linen, synthetic, anything that's not wool um, in terms of bags, totally fine for you to keep your stuff. Oh, traps. All right, just wrapping up. These traps, so there are um, a couple different brands. This is just one, also non -spon not sponsored. These are pretty useless. I just wanna say, like, I've had these, I had these from before. I had the latest problem. Um, they're supposed to last anywhere from three to six months. Um, the reason that I'm saying they're useless is because they don't, they, yes, the moth, I don't have any in there. What, the, what they can do is maybe indicate to you that you have moths um, if some fly into it, but, these don't do much if you have an infestation. Um, the these this will they only attract the males, not the females, um, and the males have a really hard time getting in them because they fly so erratically. So a lot of people will say, "I have these moth traps, but the moths are all around them, but not in it." That's because they can't fly into it. It's very difficult for them. They have to really maneuver and kind of like ease their way there, you know? So um, I, I, they just, the traps don't work though. Like all these other things work way better. Just vacuum, vacuum, throw your, your um, the debris out of your vacuum. Make sure you're cleaning your vacuum out. Make sure you're cleaning your vacuum filter because they could end up in the filter. Um, you wanna clean your filter regularly. You wanna bag up all the debris out of the vacuum, put it in a bag and take it outside before night falls super super important for me and my, with my infestations here i have found that they emerge in february and march and then again in july and august that's the twice a year thing so i'm gonna see if everything i did this fall this past fall um is going to i'll know in the next couple weeks whether or not that was successful um Oh, I, as I said before, they do like fur and feathers, and I did have a, a case a few years ago where I had some feather and fur toys my cat played with that got infested. So I have a little toy box that he gets his toys out of, and I ended up throwing away all the feather and fur toys. Um, and now he has only synthetic toys because, it, well, he has one wool uh, knitted toy that I made him. Um, but I make sure that uh, I check it regularly. And um, you can also spray. I, I mean, I don't do that because he's playing with his stuff, but um, it's important to keep an eye on those things. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Throw the collected contents away, spray down furniture, spray down storage. I would spray down storage baskets like this. I spray this down every six months or so. I'm actually gonna spray it down soon because as I said, February seems to be a time that they emerge for me. Um, so I wanna make sure that I've got that taken care of. Um, also, my cat, your mileage may vary, but my cat will help me find when I have a problem. There was one crawling around in a rug in my home office. My home office is dark for half the day um, without an, it, no natural light because there's no windows in there, but there's a skylight. Um, there was a moth crawling around, a female crawling around on the rug in there and my cat helped me find it. So my cat was, he will, uh, when he spots a bug, any bug, he just does this little cute trilling noise. So when I hear him trill, I pay attention. So your mileage may vary. Maybe your cat is lazy or your or your dog is lazy, or maybe, maybe they'll raise an alert. Um, sometimes I'll see um, him in a pensive crouch studying, um, something where I so then I know he's not very good at catching them but he's good at letting me know that they're there and then together we will corner it and and um, trap it oh also lavender sachets do not work and in fact there's been evidence that they will nest moths will nest inside those sachets so do yourself a favor don't use those either unless you like the smell but don't use them for prevention um, they're not working also cedar does not work um, the cedar closets and cedar chests work because they were sealed. They, they had the ability to be sealed. That's what kept the moths out, not the cedar. Um, cedar oil will work, 
but only when it's fresh. So it only lasts like if you have a cedar chest and it's uh, two months or younger, it's fine. It'll, it's repelling them, but after that, it doesn't repel them anymore. <coughs> um, centipedes <laughs> are kind of cool and gross at the same time, depending on your perspective. They are nature's bug assassins, along with dragonflies. So dragonflies catch flying insects, centipedes cra catch crawling ones, including spiders. Um, last spring, before I had the problem that I'm, my most recent problem in, in uh, early fall, I uh, saw a couple centipedes and I was like, that's really weird. Like, and I, I looked up I read about them and learned that they only eat other bugs. They um, they don't um, they have no interest in you or your pets. They really just want to. Uh, they just will control um, bugs. Uh, they'll eat every pest, every other pest in your house, and then they move on. So they will move out when there's nothing left to eat. They will just you know go to the next um, food source. So you can uh, let them live. Um, if you if you see them, I recommend letting them live. People have talked about letting spiders live to help control um, moth infestations, but I think centipedes are a little more effective. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm hoping I won't see any this spring. That'll be an indication that, uh, in fact, the problem is gone. Um, and unfortunately, like, the insecticide that I'm talking about does kill everything. Like, it kills spiders and centipedes, everything. It kills all insects. Um, yeah. Is that it? I talked about cedar. I talked about lavender. Uh, sunlight will repel larvae and adults. So items left out in the sun will usually... Um, help. Uh, yeah, so freezing and microwaving. Okay, that's it. Oh, one last don't. Don't buy parasitic, those microsop, microscopic parasitic moths. I've heard people talk about buying these tiny little parasitic are they bugs or moths or they are bugs, but what kind of parasitic yeah, I think they're little parasitic, tiny little microscopic parasites that will eat moths. But you know what? They destroy everything. So they will um, attack and kill all pollinators. So butterflies, bees, all of that. So don't, don't do yourself a favor because you can buy like a, a little colony of those things and release them in your home and you won't see them you won't know that they're there because they're microscopic and um but they'll kill all the good bugs too so we don't want them to kill butterflies and bees so please 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 don't um yeah don't don't buy those just vacuum all right you got this you can do it you can rid your home of these unfortunate creatures. I, I believe in you. I hope this was helpful and informative. I know it was different from my regular episode, um, but I really think that there's some important information and tips and tricks to get out there. I hope it made sense. I hope you are able to solve your own infestation if you have one. And I really felt strongly about talking about this because no one wants to talk about this. <laughs> and that's part of the reason why we don't have enough information about how to handle these problems. So I'll see you next time.